This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance broadcast. The greatest experience possible in human life is the experience of God. Nothing else can possibly compare with it. God, the supreme being, is also the supreme experience. I remember someone saying to me once, you haven't eaten Greek food until you've eaten at this one certain place near Chicago. Or people will say, you haven't seen a mountain till you've seen Pikes Peak, or you haven't seen the beauty of nature till you've seen Yosemite. You have not really experienced the awesome, the good, the true and the beautiful, the inspiring, the transcendental, until you experience God. Because God is the superlative experience of all of human life. As marvelous as human love is, divine love is even greater. As comforting as human friendship is, divine friendship is even greater. As fulfilling as human companionship, your companionship with God can be even more fulfilling. For God is the supreme experience of human existence. God loves you. And to come to find and know the love of God is breathtaking in its beauty, its truth and goodness. There is no other relationship more transcendental than the experience of the relationship with God. God is the first and the last, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. God is the genesis of all things and the destination of all things. God is the force behind phenomena, the creator, upholder, and ultimate controller of all things. God is above all your personally loving father and your friend the one who cares for you more than you could possibly conceive or imagine. God wants only, only the good for you. God wills good for you. And God can make you too a person of goodwill. God has a plan for this planet and a purpose for your individual life. God is the fullness of all things, the fountain of reality, the origin of existence. God is the timeless creator of time, the infinite origin of space, the first thought of all that is, the prime mover of all reality, the spiritual over-controller, overarching all things. But to you as a mortal human being, God is the most lovable, approachable, friendly, compassionate, warmly affectionate being imaginable. God is your celestial parent your spiritual father, the great benefactor of your soul, your guide and spiritual protector, who, though a thousand tragedies befall you, will not permit permanent spiritual injury to you unless you should choose the dark paths of selfishness and sinfulness for your own. God will nurture you and encourage you, lead you and befriend you when you think nobody else on earth cares about you at all, no matter how great was the love of your parents, your mother and your father for you. God loves you better than even your parents, cares more for you than even your own brothers and sisters, aunts, uncles, grandparents, or anybody else of your very own flesh and blood. God loves you with a living love that will not let you go. God calls you to a new depth of experience and new height of aspiration. God has a wonderful will for your life and for your eternal life. God created you to love and be loved, to serve and be a force for good in a sometimes evil world and a bearer of light in a sometimes darkened world. God is the center of reality and the meaning of meanings, the value of values, the essence of all of the highest and the best, far exceeding the speculations of philosophy and the imaginations of poetry. God is beyond the grasp of the thinking of theologians and the wonderings of metaphysicians, but may be easily found by the seeking soul and the honest heart. The comprehension of God eludes even the mightiest minds of human history, yet he may be found by the simple faith of a little child who really yearns to find him. This God is your father and your friend, the one you have sought so long for the fitful, frustrated years of your divine discontent. God has waited so long for you. May you wait no longer for God. By childlike faith, this very moment, may you find God now as your creator and your parent, 
the one who waits with love and forgiveness and newness of life for you if you will but claim it in this instant by living faith. Have faith in God. Trust in God. For as the writer H.G. Wells has said, until a man finds God and has been found by God, he begins at no beginning and works to no end. Dare to quest for God. You've been lonely for God all your life. God has loved you all along, has craved for deeper fellowship with you as well. But when you and God come together and you begin to develop a conscious contact with God, it isn't like meeting a stranger. It's like seeing a long-lost friend. Only you are the one who has been away. God has been always present, available, instantaneously accessible. When you find God, it isn't like two strangers meeting. It's like a family reunion. You and God have been related for all the years of your existence, but only gradually has that knowledge dawned upon your consciousness. You are simply finding your father. You are discovering your spiritual parent, your source, the one who brought you into being the ultimate creator of all. You have known all along that you could not be content without finding some relationship with reality, some peace with the universe, some connectedness with the cosmos. That need is within you. That need has always been within you. You cannot escape from it. No drugs or alcohol or geographic relocation or advanced education or power or wealth or fame or prestige or anything else on earth can satisfy your yearning need for God. No distractions or diversions, no recreation or entertainment, no pastimes or passions or playthings can satisfy that everlasting yearning in your soul. For God, God loves and wants a deeper relationship with you. And in your soul, you want a deeper relationship with God. And since you both want it, it is the simplest thing in the world to achieve. You can find God simply by telling God you want to. Could anything be simpler than that? What if a millionaire told you that you could have a million dollars cash instantly, but only on one condition? You had to ask for it. Could you meet such a condition? Of course you could, certainly. It is the simplest thing imaginable. Just ask for it. Ask God for a relationship with him, and that relationship will have begun in that instant. In truth, you have had a sort of relationship with God for years since God is ultimately your creator and as such has had a creator-creature relationship with you. But it is not to that that I refer. I mean a conscious relationship, a friendship, a fellowship, the robust camaraderie of a living, dynamic, interacting relationship of a parent being friends with a child and a child being friends with a parent. It is that which you crave and it is that which you can have beginning this very moment if you've never had it before. All you have to do is want it and say in your soul, God, I need to find you. I want to know you and experience your friendship and your love. I crave for a better understanding of you, a fuller sense of your reality, your goodness, your strength, your will and your purpose for my life. If you pray that, right now and mean that, all of life will begin to turn around for you, beginning here and now, this very moment. Remember, all you need to make conscious contact with God is the genuine desire to make conscious contact with God. If you ask for it, you'll get it. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. Ask and you will receive. You may not discover this relationship in the way you think you will. It may not feel like you think it'll feel. It may have varying degrees of emotional impact on you. There is no way of telling. That is between you and God. If you're a person of extremes of temperament, the experience of finding God may be emotionally profound. If you're a person of milder feelings, it may be but a gentle but real reassurance of the reality of spiritual things. There may be little feeling to it at all. It may come as more of a mental surety of things divine. But however it may come, you may be assured that it will come. 
and you will become more and more and more certain of the reality of your relationship with God, and it will be the greatest satisfaction of your life. Both you and God have longed for this, and you at last can satisfy that longing by in this moment daring to give your life totally to the God who gave you your life originally. Commit yourself to this relationship with God, and God will always be there for you. God loves you better than a mother loves her baby and a father loves his child. God has a wonderful will for your life and an eternal will for your eternal life, and all that is available to you right here and right now, this very moment. It is only a heartbeat away, the finding and knowing of the God who has loved you forever and who will love you forever in peace and joy and life abundant, beginning right here, right now, this very moment, if you will have the faith to claim it for your own. Now write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute. If you're intrigued by the things discussed on this broadcast, write us a letter to Post Office Box 3080-3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer. How do you find God? How can you grow spiritually? Write for this free literature. And for those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address. Post Office Box 3080 Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.